Hello all and welcome to episode 14 topic related to covid-19 situation in in India and uh, how the government has responded to uh, by creating these new applications and this new database and this new sharing of information and uh, what we are going to talk about is the aroge setu app and uh, we have with us uh, kumaran who is the chief technical officer and chief mentor for uh, tiny magic and uh, kumaran welcome thank you thank you so 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 kumaran so tell me what what do you think about this app, this aroge setu app because uh, now we are hearing that a lot of uh, state governments uh, are insisting on people to be installing these applications and uh, application and uh, doing this uh, entire contact tracing uh, making it work so, so what is what is your opinion what, what what does it really mean for having this contact tracing application i think uh... One of the things, whenever I come across situations like this, right, a technology working or not working or a debate around that, I kind of look at it uh, from the perspective that how is it useful to me? What can I learn from that? Right now, uh, let me mm -hmm. begin by telling that uh, my opinion of whether Arokya Setu as an app, right, is it a good one? Is it great for India? I don't operate at that level, right? I don't have enough okay. data to comment on that. Okay, so it would be very uh, okay. childish or immature for me to comment on that app itself, right? But there are some interesting learnings I could get out of right. the app or what is happening around. The first thing which I kind of uh, realized is uh, what is the target audience demographic? I think that leads a lot to be uh, focused on. Now, if I lead the history of it, right, one of the inspirations happens to be from an app rolled out in Singapore. And that was kind of one of the inspirations for doing this. Now, it's kind of so the Singapore government rolled it out. OK, uh, this is my understanding. Now, then a lot of other governments also started doing that. You know, I'm also going to do a contact tracing app. But if I kind of look at it, the demographic of Singapore is very different. It's a very small country. It's very easy to uh, implement and execute something, the, the size itself. But if you take a very large countries, like whether it's US or whether it's India kind of a thing, uh, it becomes very hard to execute it. Second, if you take Singapore, it is very authoritative government. Right. They have, they wield a lot of power. Okay, so it's a kind of, uh, it's, I would call it controlled democracy or a liberal uh, dictatorship. Liberal yeah. dictatorship, yeah. Okay, so it's like, uh, so because it's, they are like that, it's kind of uh, easier. Now, as an architect, right? One of the things which I kind of is to understand that reality of those dynamics. Whereas in a large population where the country is very democratic in nature, it would be hard to implement a solution like this. Execution will be hard. So there they can say, if you don't install that app, $500 fine. People will go install it. Okay, that's how that okay. government works. Okay. okay. Right, right. Yeah, I see that in China also, right? Because... China has sort of successfully implemented it. WeChat, the way the WeChat platform works is all these applications are like mini applications within within the WeChat platform and they can just roll it out. And, and in fact, uh, when you go to some location, they insist on showing that that you are green in that application. Right. So uh. so that that's you're right. The authority, authoritarian governments uh, can sort of implement it very quickly. And I and would. When out of. To remove the political feeling around that, right? Let me say the infrastructure supports it. And when I say an infrastructure, I am looking at culture, rules, way of living as a part of infrastructure, not just the technology alone. Right. Okay. Right. So the infrastructure supports something like that. Right. In large uh, demographics, 
our infrastructure is doesn't necessarily support that. We have state governments, you have a central government or in US you have a federal government and we have what people can do and what they cannot do. And there are strong opinions about what is privacy, um, what can be. So this is purely from a rules and a philosophy and principles perspective. The second thing that comes up is uh, to install an app, you need to have phones. Smartphones. Now it's kind of interesting. A lot of people have phones today, mobile phones, but how many of them have a smartphone feature which is there? Now that is, uh, I think that's such a very low percentage. The second thing is a technology impact. People who have worked with Bluetooth kind of knows that Bluetooth just sucks away bandwidth like hell. Okay. So that's that's another uh, aspect of the problem. Now let's assume that we get through all this. Now the next thing is about adoption. Until people have actually, all of them have installed it and the data comes out, the real value of the application doesn't show up. So what's the motivation to get it there? Okay, so that's one part. Then um, interestingly it and I'm going to stay clear of data privacy and uh, security of of that. OK, because like um, I, I do not have enough information to say whether it is secure or it isn't secure. OK, and it's always a question of something. It's not a question of how secure it is. It is it's a more a question easily answered is what all have I secured? is a better question to answer that is it secure or not? So uh, yes. from the antivirus world, I would say we are always insecure. It's just a question of these are the security aspects that I have taken care of. OK, so I'm All not right. getting right. talking about that because that becomes a different, completely different topic by itself. And how will you use that data and things like that? But sticking to uh, how am I going to use the data itself? Assuming that people have all installed it. Now, there's a big question mark there. Which percentage of population is actually going to install this app? Now, unless it reaches a critical mass, the whole thing itself is a uh, doesn't really serve its purpose. Second is about the solution itself. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a lot of uh, it needs to be reliable. It needs to be useful for people to use it. OK. And one of the feedbacks which I saw is like even without data being captured about contact tracing, it doesn't uh, currently that app does app doesn't have whatever data is that that could have been presented already. For example, it could be something like um, how is my state doing? How is my city doing? How is my uh, street doing? This has got nothing to do with contact tracing with existing data from let's say ICMR or the hospitals, this data could be fed into it. So that app has some value there. It is not dependent on that contact data. There is some other data which gives value to that app. And contact tracing now adds on top of that. I think that itself was missing. You started off with contact data. Let me capture mm -hmm. that data and then do it. Right, so it's kind of two. I, I think now, now, now the app actually does provide. Uh, in so if so, the way I've seen it, it works is, you have uh, something like uh, a situation. So if you just install the app for the first time, you have your your phone really doesn't have any data of what you are, and so what it does it it does actually pick up your GPS location and say within one kilometer what is the known cases as per ICMR data. Right, so it actually does give you that information. So, so, so the, from that perspective, it also gives you all the statistics, whatever ICMR has that is now available as part of the app. It does provide your ambient data, even if you have not gone outside the house for so long. That's good. Then I read some other uh, things where, like, uh, there were it doesn't uh, there's a lot. There could be a lot of po false positives there. So, for example, like it works on Bluetooth and space, right? So it's something like 
if uh, four people are in an apartment okay and uh, it so happened that i visited another apartment and i came and the person who was like infected walked through the staircase and went off and i was actually sleeping inside my room okay it would actually pick up and yeah. tag me as one infected person i come into contact well technically i have not been in contact with that person yeah because as long as you know the bluetooth range which can be up to 30 meters sometime right i don't know means 20 feet or something something like that correct so yeah. i think yeah. so it, it's kind of uh, interesting and in um, so well there could be at least if i say that that person could have walked touched the staircases and things like that but let's assume somebody is walking through the street i mean just you open your bluetooth you would find so many bluetooth points there yes 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 okay so Our, yeah and and so what, what what we are saying is that technologically it is not that uh mature enough to be dependable accurate. dependable it's not dependable see and, but, but and, and, from uh, yeah if from the if, me, if if you're not looking at yeah, sorry go ahead i was telling this intention of this app is to make you feel secure if we go back to that intention right it's to make you feel yes. safe right safety right. comes from what i can depend on it falters on that first step yes so the overall intention so, of so the it app seems like, like yeah so so it it's, it seems to be more useful to the government than to the individual yeah correct right so it's like you know what i don't i don't so, have so, any data so i would it i mean if i am the government then it helps me go and and uh, i will do an averaging out of what is good what is bad right data it's from a statistical overall approach does it help sure it does uh, but for an individual is it going to be beneficial i think it has to still cross that first step of it is going to even from a health perspective it doesn't make me feel more secure assume that my data is all safe it will not be used for controlling me and stuff like that right the basic mm -hmm. intention of this exercise itself that it will make me feel safe it is struggling to meet that expectation of me as an end user right yeah i i agree i think uh, and uh, uh, given a uh, sort of what whatever success has been achieved in china or singapore by by and even in korea i believe they have achieved some level of success with this contact tracing uh, applications uh, uh, and more and more uh, governments are actually trying to uh, go into the business of making this application mandatory and uh, and especially in europe and all uh, where the spread is much much larger than than a place like india where lockdown has sort of brought it down for the moment create an application like arogya setu and then and in to go beyond that even apple and yeah, and google actually have come up with their own contact tracing api they call it the contact tracing Correct. api and uh, what they have done is uh in fact i was reading the controversy with with the france government where uh, france government wants that data to be uh, uh, to be given to us uh, he says that the, the the minister's concern said that apple did not cooperate with us because the apparent uh, 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 the logic behind apple and google's framework was that you cannot centralize the data right and whereas the france government wanted to centralize the data because that's the only way that the data will be useful to the government right if you don't centralize the data the government really doesn't benefit from you installing the application right so 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 that that is one situation which i saw very interesting and i think probably if they had to kind of approach the same thing i think one of the things is yes the government needs a broad data about where people are who got infected where they were like that i think that a a more sturdier approach non in, uh, non painful approach from an execution perspective would be that uh, work with the cellular service providers right it might not it might not be that accurate but at least to a tower level they can kind of get it yes. where all did that contact move no that for that no app 
installation is needed no bluetooth yeah. is needed right right okay and it's just that you have a list of numbers and you kind of uh, say where were those numbers where which locations and it's like it gives you data probably if you do gps right each phone yes. if you look at it you can kind of have a history of where a particular phone was to an accuracy of 300 400 meters i think that's that's kind of more than enough for the government to know what and who yeah so so i i think uh, so that is also a sort of a counterpoint to the people concerned about privacy right uh, uh, that if the government really wants to know where you are physically right because that's what contact tracing is all about that where did you go and what did you find out and who did you were you were in close proximity to right it's not doesn't have to be very accurate from the government perspective just they need to know how many people were in the vicinity of this this particular phone number uh they can simply like you said they can simply get it from the from the cellular providers and they just they don't need to even ask anybody's permission right it says correct uh force measure uh we need to take over this data and uh, we don't really care about privacy anymore because we want this data because we want to make sure that uh, people live whether private or not but they live right so that that so, so that that sort of is is my uh See, and 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 I think that kind of makes it secure that nobody is coming into my phone, right? Now, yeah. it's it's one of those things. It wants access to my Bluetooth, my GPS. I don't. What all is it's going to access and take it? What do I know? Yeah. Correct. So, 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 so yeah. So, so the, one of the one of the one of the. Uh, one of the persons i know who is involved with the 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 auditing of this application so so i was i was told there's like roughly 6 650 700 lines of code that's that is all the application is right uh -huh. and and that is that application is is uh, is is good enough and it really doesn't so it actually doesn't really send any data anywhere unless you get infected it as identified as infected right so so most of the time it is just talking to bluetooth near your place and if you are downloading data from the government it says okay what is happening around you right so otherwise it really doesn't send any data anywhere right so it stores the data locally the moment you get infected only, and so it doesn't even store data for very long so it stores data for the last 14 odd days it says right so so it doesn't have to send anybody as long as you are the safe distance away from whoever has been infected it doesn't send data anywhere it just keeps quiet keeps talking to storing data for the last 14 days how many phones you came with arogya setu app around you that's all it does and and if 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 it if it finally if you do finally get tagged as somebody who has come in contact with a infected person it will ask you to go for testing or whatever and then the data goes and lives uh with the government for let's say 30 days or so okay okay so and after that uh, if you get actually get tested and get infected then you get tagged as actually infected then your number is actually turned out as as red and then then the rest of the people in your chick contact chain actually get triggered that whoever you have come in contact with so so that that's how the chain chain progresses but once you get infected the data is saved with the government that this person is infected right and you are being tracked at that point you are being tracked and uh, and once you turn negative they will keep the data for 60 days okay so that's the that's the that's the uh, official position and and the last thing which i was reading was they are trying they are looking at making it open source the whole code of the application uh, so there was a french there is a french hacker who actually went around uh, investigating this application that what is this application really do so uh, so he came up with and said that there are some privacy concerns and all those things so government's counterpoint is is whatever data you are finding out from the phone is already public because we are already advertising which area is infected how many people are infected in which area that is all public information we are not telling who is infected so actually you can change the location of your phone right if you have any if you yeah, do yeah. any uh, yeah any google or apple development you can physically go in and change a parameter and change the location of your phone and and see the data right so so that's that's what was being brought out so so 
so although means this is means for a application created in apparently two weeks i would say it's a decent effort yeah, it's a decent effort and uh, maybe it is not all with the way thought through like uh, 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 an application but i guess given the today's application development agile and all those things hopefully they can come to a level where it is actually useful yeah i think that's the key point there right i think probably who is its primary user and what is the intention i think that needs to be always kind of kept in uh, focus and uh, for a large population of uh, india where majority of them still don't have smartphones uh installing and configuring even if they have a smartphone installing an app uh, registering themselves as a user all that is like uh, hard steps to climb right right so 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 although means technologically they may succeed in making the application useful but what we are talking about here is that the scenario is not good to because if not if everybody doesn't use it then the, it is not as useful it, as as the government wants true. it to be useful correct and and everybody might be a stretch even to hit a critical mask of 50 60% using it right yeah. uh, it's it's still hard yeah. achieving yeah. a 20% yeah. so usage given, in a yeah. population yeah. like india itself is hard yeah i mean you see given that uh, the spread is mainly in urban centers right so and uh, uh, there is large middle middle class population in 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 in, uh, in urban centers it is still possible that it will be at least useful for or because if you see the numbers the official numbers are like 50000 people infected right mm. and i believe this application has millions of downloads right so so there is a significant uh, ratio of people actually identified as infected versus how many people have actually downloaded the app so so i'm not really that pessimistic about about the the use using the efficiency of the application but okay. yes but it is not it is not 100% it is never going to be 100% unlike maybe china where they can say either you have this or you don't don't enter anywhere right so so that's so so that in fact they they have they have full full control over where you go you cannot just go from city to city just like that anymore right so so that's that's the uh, situation with the uh, <laughs> with these contact tracing applications anything else which you can think of uh, related to the the contact tracing which is which is significant uh, no i think i've shared whatever uh, i had to think about this so let's just uh, hope that the usability right or the uh, value of that comes more uh, closer to people using it and more clear so it's i think it's all about adoption at the end of the day here drives more adoption than than anything else <laughs> That's and true. Uh, speci- yeah especially in containment zones right so the large sections which are still sort of green zones they don't really have to worry about it but in the containment zones they could probably enforce ah, it enforce correct. it right so so that's that's probably the the most possible use case for for, for this contact tracing application that uh, you cannot containment correct. zone unless you have this app right? that's true right. correct that's a good point right so so i think because now the lockdown situation has has to be over with right so there's no no more value in the lockdown i guess people are finding because if people don't have a uh, livelihood they are unlikely to feel happy to be even alive right so so that yeah. that's the that that's the that's the critical point we are at, at and hopefully this lockdown ends very soon so thank you thank you kumaran for your time and uh, next time we'll hope uh, you find some good books to recommend to us we've been not recommending books yeah. for some time some time and uh, next time hopefully we'll have some good books to recommend all right we'll so we'll do that thank you and i'll see you next time see you next time